Hello everybody, this is Lauren Harpster from Bead and Blossom. In this video lesson, I will be teaching you how to make the stamen for our French bead clematis. I'm going to demonstrate the basic method for making the stamen components using unit A from the pattern, and then I will show you how unit B and C are a little bit different. Now just for the video demonstration, I'm going to be using some wonky colors just so that you can see a little bit more easily what I'm doing with my beads and wire. But if you're using the main shading pattern that's listed in the PDF, you'll be using color C for unit A, and you'll be using uh, the 28 gauge wire. Now, we're working with a technique that's gonna require us to thread the wire through the beads twice. And for a size 11 seed bead, that means you need to you use a 28 gauge wire. But if you're working with the size 15 uh, bead option that's listed in the materials list, um, you might need to size down to a 30 gauge. Um, most of the time I can get a 28 gauge wire through size 15 beads twice, um, but every once in a while you run into some where it's a really, really tight fit or you can't get it through. So you might need a 30 gauge for the 15 0 option. Okay. Now unit A says that we need about 12 inches of wire. And with this technique, we cannot leave our wire attached to our spool. We do need to cut it off. Now, every time a pattern tells you a specific amount of wire to cut, always cut a little bit more because you might use a little bit more or a little bit less wire than um, the designer did. That's just the way that French beading goes. So it says 12 inches. I'm going to cut a little bit more than that just to give myself a little bit of space. All right, now I'm going to start with some tips for good wire management when working, especially with these thin gauges of wire. Uh, because wire is not like thread, it is a little bit stiffer, but you do have to handle it a little bit more gently so it doesn't break. So you can see right now that I am running my wire, my, my fingers along the wire. This is just to straighten it out. And I will be doing this multiple times while I'm making the piece to keep my wire straight. Um, one that re after it comes right off the spool, sometimes it's a little bit coiled and that just makes it a little bit harder to work with, but also makes it more likely that it will form a kink. And when you get a kink, um, it makes it a lot more likely that the wire is going to break on you. So try to prevent kinks from happening um, instead of trying to fix them later. All right, so for unit A, we're going to start with two wire back fringes using four beads each. So I'm going to string four beads onto my wire. Uh, the wire back fringe is a continuous technique, meaning we're making multiples all on the same length of wire. And with all continuous techniques, you need to leave a small tail wire at the beginning. That's usually going to be two to three inches. I usually just eyeball it, but you can measure if that's more comfortable for you. All right, so I'm going to pinch and hold that uh, length of tail wire there because I don't want it to shrink. And I'm going to move this top bead out of the way because we're actually going to skip that bead when we put our wire back through. That will act kind of as a stopper at the top of our fringe. Now I'm going to check my wire and make sure that it's making a nice curve back towards my work that will give me a little bit more control over how the wire moves. All right, so I'm going to move that top bead out of the way and I'm going to go back down the same way that I came back out. So I'm going to go back down this way, not up this way, down. Skip that first bead as it will act as a little stopper at the tip of your fringe. All right, and then I'm going to pull on just the working end of my wire. And as I'm pulling, I'm going to watch that wire and make sure that it's not forming any kinks. Pull it all the way through until that first bead sits tightly on top of the fringe. All right, so there's my first four bead fringe and we need to make one more of the same size. So again, I'm going to string four beads onto the working end of my wire. All right, so I'm going to slide those four beads down to the bottom right below that first fringe. And I like to pull my working wire out at a 90 degree angle from the first fringe. This will, one, help me to get that, that second fringe really close together to the first fringe, but it also helps with the wire being able to go straight through the beads in both directions. If you go in at an angle and you're pulling that wire through at an angle, it does put a little bit more um, pressure on the wire and um, we want to try to avoid overworking the wire as much as we can. So I'm going to run my finger along the length of my wire, make sure it's straight, and then turn it into a curve back towards my work. Move that top bead out of the way, and then 
take my wire back down through the bottom three beads. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pinch and hold that first fringe and those three new beads with my thumb and forefinger on one hand. That will help keep that fringe from moving out of place. And then I'm going to pull my wire straight through, keep an eye on the wire, make sure that it's not about to form a kink, and if it does, fix it before you go any further. All right, so I pulled it all the way through and I've got my second fringe. Now, if your fringe did not end up as close to the first one as you would like, you don't really want a space there. You want it to be as close as you can get it without making it too tight, which might make your wire snap. So um, if there is a little bit of a space, you can grab that top bead. Again, move it back down to that 90 degree angle position so that your wire goes straight through in both directions. And then you can tug on the working wire to kind of tighten that up. All right. So I've made two four bead fringes and I'm gonna do, um, next I'm gonna be doing uh, six six bead fringes. All right, so add six beads to the working end of your wire. Straighten out the wire. Position the new fringe at a 90 degree angle from the previous fringe. Move that top bead out of the way make your wire form a nice little curve back towards your work and make sure that it's straight at the end. Put the wire back down through your beads and then pinch and hold all those fringes to keep that third one from moving out of place. Pull on the working wire to pull that last bead right into position. Now those are a little bit too far apart there. So I'm going to grab that top bead and just gently tug on my working wire and that should scoot them a little bit closer. All right, so I'm gonna go and make five more of these six bead fringes. All right, so I've got all of my fringes made and I'm ready to close this unit into a little circle. Now, unit A is gonna be closed a little bit differently than B and C um, because we need to close it into more of a tuft. We don't want an open hole in the center. So we're going to take the starting tail wire, which is the one at the beginning of the unit, and we're going to pull it across and over in between the second and third of the longer fringes. Down between those two fringes and then kind of pull it tight. And that's gonna pull those first two short fringes kind of into the middle of the unit. All right, now try to hold that wire taut if you can. And then we're gonna take these six longer fringes and wrap them into a circle around the two shorter ones. So I'm gonna close this around, pull it over there, and then taking the longer end of the wire, the working end or the ending tail wire, and I'm going to wrap it around that first six bead fringe. And that should secure those uh, six longer fringes into a circle around the two shorter ones. Now down below the unit, I'm gonna twist these two wires together just a few times. That's just going to secure and make sure that everything stays in position. And then if you have any extra length in your wire, you can just trim that off. And I do trim these to a different length. That just makes it so that uh, when we assemble our flower, all of our wires won't end in the same spot. So there is a finished unit A for our clematis stamen. All right, so now let's look at units B and C for our clematis stamen. For unit B, I cut about 18 inches of wire and I made 12 wire back fringes using eight beads each. For unit C, I cut about 24 inches of wire and I made 14 wire back fringes using 10 beads each. Now I just used the same color that was already in my bead spinner just so it show up a little bit better on screen, but you should be using color D, which in my case was either white or yellow, depending on which flower we're looking at. Um, but you should be using whatever color you chose for color D, which is the outer color of the stamen. Now what you'll notice about uh, units B and C is that we've got this open hole in the center, which means we need to close it a little bit differently than we did unit A. So let me go show you how to close into a circle with an open hole. To close units B and C, we're going to take the working wire and we're going to wrap it around the first fringe that we made. Pull the last fringe right beside the first one. I'm gonna make a full circuit around that first fringe just so it's very secure. 
Now, if you look at the bottom, you'll notice that both of our tail wires are on the same side of the unit. Now, this is going to make it really hard to center the stamen on the center of our flower. So what I like to do, I call it uh, repositioning the stem wire or centering the stem wire. And so to do that, I'm going to take one of the wires and bring it across the unit. It doesn't matter if you go over the top of the unit or under the bottom of the unit, just as long as you go across to the other side. And then I'm going to wrap around one of the little fringes on the opposite side. Now that's going to make it so that uh, one stem wire is on one side of the unit and the other stem wire is on the other side. After I've done that, I can bring both of the wires together in the center of the unit, kind of right in the center of the hole underneath the unit. And that's going to make it easier to center the stamen, um, both with the other stamen components and on the finished flower stem. All right, last part of this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble the stamen together, just so we don't have a lot of little pieces floating around while we're waiting to assemble the full stem. All right, now if you're making the full arrangement, I had two small flowers and one large flower, you'll need to make three unit A, three unit B, and three unit C. That's one of each for each size for each of the flowers. All right, now to assemble them, we're going to take unit A and make sure that those little tail wires are straight and close together. And we're going to insert those two wires down into the center of unit B right into the middle there, make sure that the wires are going through the same hole and then push them down and close together like that. Make sure that your stamen don't get all wonky. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with unit C. Straighten out these wires and kind of pinch them close together. That makes it a little bit easier to get them through the same hole. And then we're going to put it right into the middle of unit C. And again, push them all close together. I like to kind of tug on the bottom to make sure that they are nice and tight and close together. And I'm going to very gently push down on the middle part of unit A so that I everything is, stays nice and tight. And I'm going to twist all of these wires below together. I'm going to try and make my twist as smooth as I can. And I do that uh, by straightening out my wires and then kind of pulling down while I'm twisting. It helps a little bit there. All right, I'm going to go through and kind of rearrange my stamen that got a little bit wonkified while I was working. All right, so this is what my little wonky colored one looks like, but the one that you're making for your flower should look something like this when you've made it with the colors that you've chosen. So for my blue one, I used this transparent matte lime green, and then um, I think that's a, it's either a Ceylon or an opal white for color D. And let me show you some more examples here because there's a lot you can do with color in the stamen of your flowers. Uh, this one I use, this one looks like it's either a Ceylon or opal white and then just an opaque pale yellow in the center for unit A. And then let's see, for my little white ones, for my little white ones, I actually left off unit C and then I used a darker gold color in the center and then a, a lighter yellow for unit B. And then, let's see, I had some uh, that I made a 903 cut beads. These ones I accidentally made too long. I put too many beads on each of the little fringes. Uh, so if you want a show your stamen, that's a good way to do it is to add a little couple of extra beads there on each of the fringes. Um, but I also added an extra unit on my large flower. Now, if you look at the patterns for the unit uh, B and C of the stamen, you'll notice that they increase by two fringes and two beads for each unit. So to add, if you wanted to do a unit D there, um, add two extra fringes and two extra beads to each of the fringes. That's how I did that. But um, I mean, there's just a lot that you can do with color. So please don't feel like you're kind of stuck in the same colors that I used for mine.